In our news bulletin for this evening, the Public Health Division cautions people to be mindful of a number of diseases present in the region. A new project that's targeting six villages, the pilot concept for waste segregation and composting is to minimise waste on the island. The local rugby union voiced disappointment with a lack of teams in the 15th rugby season this year. Tuapa Uhomoto was the centre of attention as the village put on their village show day on Saturday. Public health officials are monitoring various epidemics in the region and continue to caution locals travelling to be mindful of the different illnesses and diseases. A World Health Organisation surveillance report and the Secretariat of the Pacific Community's epidemic map have identified areas that have registered various epidemics that threaten the health of people in this area. The syndromic surveillance in the Pacific region includes New Zealand and Australia, and the report highlighted areas in the Pacific region where there is a heavy concentration of epidemics and their causes, mainly by mosquitoes or travellers from within the region. The Department of Health syndromic surveillance system was set up five years ago, and the idea was uh, for the health department to be able to be updated in regards to the infectious diseases that are going out in the Pacific. So we um, have had to work with the World Health Organization in regards to the um, updating, near in regards to those infectious diseases in regards, in, 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 in so far as um, infectious diseases are concerned. And the reason being is that so we are able to prepare ourselves if um, there is an outbreak uh, anywhere else out there. So uh, because there are a lot of people actually traveling these days and our uh, plane uh, routes have uh, gone up from one flight per week to two, so we are very concerned if there is an outbreak, say, for example, uh, at the moment there is an outbreak of dinghy, dinghy fever in Samoa, and we did have a team who had gone down for the sports. So when they came back, we were able to monitor them at the airport by doing um, our usual screening, uh, which is presenting the questions um, in a simple questionnaire to see whether or not they came back with any of the symptoms in relation to dinghy fever. New Zealand and Australia are not immune to the epidemic with reported cases of influenza-like illnesses in New Zealand, while Australia has the dinghy fever epidemic in tropical Queensland, similar to the ones in the Solomon Islands, French Polynesia, Fiji and Tonga. New Zealand is also a country where there is a high number of travellers from around the Pacific region that pass through, and it has one of the most stringent. In April of... Uh this year also we were, we were able to um, develop, to work with um, Ground Law Office who have helped us to develop a piece of legislation whereby uh, anyone travelling um, out to the Pacific, um, out of New Zealand, so based on their travel history, say for example, if they had travelled to places that had already had um, um, an outbreak of infectious disease, we'd be able to pick them up at the airport. So if they came back with any symptoms, we'd be able to refer them to come and see the doctor immediately because uh, we have experiences in the past where um, some of our relatives had come back with some symptoms and had gone home. So when uh, there was um, an outbreak, it was a little bit um, difficult for the department to, um, to pick up those who are already infected. So um, we already know what happened with the dinghy outbreak that we had in 2012, where it was a little bit late for us to pick up who the infected cases, and it went to 208. Um, thus far, we um, have been able to contain all of those people who had uh, arrived with uh, some symptoms of some sort, and uh, we have also been able to work together with the other border control officers as well. So it's not only protecting um, the, our people at the airport, it's also working at the seaport. We'd just like to um, encourage all our um, local New Orleans who do travel out to the Pacific to please, when you do come back to the country, to please uh, complete your forms because we are having difficulty with um, some of our uh, local counterparts who refuse to complete the um, uh, border control half-arrival forms that we have given them at the airport. And to also be aware that it has now become, um, 
that if you don't fill in the form, you'll be liable to pay $50 as penalty fee. New Year's isolation could hinder the rapid treatment for any epidemics that occur from time to time and the frequent travelling within the region could introduce, in some cases, some serious health complications that cannot be treated locally and that at times has proven fatal. Waste segregation and compost making is the focus of a four-day workshop currently being held at the Newer Golf and Sports Club. The training session is a joint effort with the help of the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program SPREP in partnership with the Pacific Organic and Ethical Trade Community, POETCOM. Local counterparts on island are the Environment Department and the Newer Island Organic Farmers Association, NYOFA, who will work to incorporate ways to make waste useful. The project also looks on ways to reduce and also discuss the kind of pollutants when burning rubbish and green waste that enter the environment and harm human health. We spoke to one of the facilitators today. The whole idea um, is to improve sustainability and the way to uh, in, increase sustainability in Nui is to divert what is waste and to turn it into a resource. And one of the great resources that we have here is all the organic and green waste that has been created. So every time people uh, clear their gardens, they're producing a whole range of green waste. And the whole idea that we're trying to do here is to separate that out and instead of burning it, turning it into compost and soil conditioner to improve the uh, crops and to improve the output of uh, everyone's farms. The type of people that we are inviting to these sessions are the village council representatives and people involved also uh, with the youth as well. So um, these people, we hope, will be uh, learning the importance of separating waste and the importance of composting, and then they'll bring that back to their village and it'll uh, flow through the village so that we, each village slowly takes on board uh, this knowledge and these new learnings um, and implements it across the whole village. One of the key issues is to remove plastics and um, organics from the waste streams. When they burn, they produce these pops, these pollutants. So we're looking at segregating them out and we have the uh, long-term intention of recycling them and sending them off island and gaining revenue uh, from this. So converting it from a waste that normally gets burnt or dumped into a revenue that earns money. According to the Director of Environment, Sauni Tongatule, this project is a reaffirmation of previous campaigns such as the POPS project to reduce and minimise waste by separating household waste and taking biodegradable waste for composting. We caught up with the group today during their practical session for compost making that is a component of this project that is supported by NYOFA, who are also in the process of working together with a growers group in the Cook Islands to share information and practices. I think the potential is that you're going to reduce your import of fertilizer and um, improve the environment that the farmers work in. And uh, those are the potential. That's the natural potential. That's the environment that is improved. Then the financial um, um, uh, angle would be that uh, we slowly stop importing uh, foreign uh, fertilizer into our country. Then our farmers can use their own our own resource or our own waste that we normally burn off uh, in the country. I think they need to think about um, uh, beyond the farming area. That's the main reason I suppose a lot of people go into compost so they can then they can grow their plants better. I think beyond that, you've got to think about the broader environment that you are affecting, uh, whether it's positively or negatively. And um, you've got a waterway to protect. Uh, and I understand most of your water is groundwater, which is nice. But um, the more chemical we import for agriculture, then the chance of that being uh, polluted or contaminated down the line is real. So by having this kind of practice, we are eliminating those chances uh, every day that we work on this system. Next to godliness is cleanliness. And as Christian people, that um, we should be aware of the um, activities that we're involved in, the waste that we, um, we, we deal with, 
or we produce, and we need to handle that carefully because I think that's our responsibility as as a people, and for the sake of the next generation, and、um, hopefully they catch on to this and keep keep a healthy environment going. In addition, they're also in talks with local rubbish collection contractors to devise a way to ensure that. What is separated from households is also disposed of in an orderly manner. This project will involve six villages to pilot the project that includes Liku, Hakupu, Baya, Avasele, Tamkotonga, and Alufi. The pilot project will be rolled out over a period of 15 months with training workshops, and it is expected that the best practices and lessons learned. Would be put into a national strategy. The Newe Rugby Union's domestic rugby competition for 15s aside kicked off last Saturday at the Newe High School grounds. Only two teams fronted up this year. Alofi and Hakupu managed to gather enough players together for a game. The two teams have been formidable foes over the years, and those who were present say that. They played some good rugby, but some of the combinations have yet to gel. Alofi's team appeared to be more cohesive, claiming the first win for the three-match series, 15 points to Alofi and five for Hakupu. The NIU secretary Norman Misimesi says that the next game will be held this Friday, whilst they're still looking for another venue for the last game because the new high school grounds will be busy next week with the Alofi North Showday. The union is happy that the 15s season is going ahead, but there is some disappointment from within NRU's management about the lack of numbers from other villages, as it would have been ideal to have more competition. However, with a limited pool of players to draw from, it appears Alofi's team is a combination of players from the Southern Marlins and Alofi Marco Sevens team, plus some players from other village teams that played in the Sevens tournament. It was Tuapa's turn to shine on Saturday as the community came together to host their annual village showday. The day started off overcast in the early hours of the morning as residents filed in with their crops and set up stalls. The village green was surrounded by food stalls, although there were a few missing this year. The aroma of freshly cooked barbecue and other treats on sale provided a little something for all visitors on the day. In the formalities for the village council, welcomed everyone. And a moment of silence was also observed in remembrance and respect for the village pastor, Reverend Aifulia Pumali, who passed away suddenly a few months ago. Miss Niwe Aotearoa, Elaine Karana, made a guest appearance and also performed a dance to open up the entertainment section of the show. Miss Karana is of Niwe heritage through her mother, who is from the village of Namukulu, and her father is from the Cook Islands. This year, the youth opted to wear yellow, the colour for Matalave. Entertainment and dances this year from the youth were somewhat low-key, but had a great vibe to them. As the children of the pastor also led the dances, this is also an opportunity for the village to bid farewell to the family who have served the village loyally for many years. Following the entertainment, it was time for local sports with the seeker throwing for the men and coconut bowling for the women. Young master Louis Mokale came out as the champion, showing that technique is what counts. Managing to outdo those twice his size and age, a feat much to be admired. Overall, Tuapa Uhomoto Falipipi Mafala managed to pull off a great show day for 2015. And that concludes our news bulletin for this evening. Do join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday. Don't forget that tomorrow. The Environment Department is celebrating World Ozone Day.